Now we unpack a bit further that word architecture, organizational architecture that we mentioned in the previous module. As I said, it's about the design and interaction of relationships, but let's see what it really means. So we are talking about stakeholder engagement amongst other things, but it's consistent with what we call the resource-based view of the firm. It's an important aspect of strategy, management, literature, and this is a never enduring quote. It's been around for a long time. I don't have the date there, but this book, for example, dates back to 2004. Let's see the various components. First of all, success derives from a competitive advantage. Clearly, you need to have an advantage in the marketplace. Otherwise, you're just being also run. It's based on distinctive capabilities or core competencies, core capabilities. So you have to be particularly good at something and distinctive, different from everyone else. And so, so you've got the advantage, it comes from capabilities. You need to know what they are and apply them to the relevant markets. Otherwise, they're wasted. They're not used appropriately to the full extent. Now, what brings the whole thing together in this quote is it is most often derived from the unique character of a firm's relationships with its suppliers, customers, or employees. This is really what we talk about architecture. It's relationships, internal and external, employees, customers, suppliers, but also formal and informal relationships, like who has the authority to make certain decisions or to spend certain amounts of money, but also how we interact, how we communicate, how we you know, agree or disagree amongst ourselves and come to positive conclusions. So success is based on capabilities that you have to apply to the right environment. So environment, environmental section is important. And what the capabilities come from is mostly the special type of relationships that we have. Absolutely crucial. Now, John Kay goes on to say, also, there are three types of distinctive capability that we find regularly when you look at successful companies. For example, to other mark, innovation and reputation. Yes, it's good to innovate as that's the, an important component of this DIG model, the momentum model. And as you innovate continuously, then you start to have a, a reputation for being at the forefront of your field important so the customer sees you and might come to you as a first port of call for new products or they're willing to accept what you bring to market more readily and more easily than if you don't have the reputation. But how does this happen? What allows you to keep on innovating? Yes, it's the architecture that is very crucial. It's that motor that's working in the background that allows it to happen. Let's see, what are the practical implications of this theory? Diversity is good, cool. It's useful to have small empowered teams, so giving people the power to make decisions and to communicate in small environments. We need to realize that people who are in contact with markets know a lot about the marketplace because they talk to customers on a regular basis. <laughs> this one is in answers are not in the building. It's out there, it's in the marketplace. Get out, go and see what's happening. Speak to the customers if that is at all possible. And finally, everybody, everybody can contribute. Good ideas can come from anywhere in the organization. So let's see, this issue about diversity is good. Certainly diversity seems to bring better performance in organizations. You can access a broader pool of human capital. And interestingly, it's also useful for the customer because a diverse, if you have a diverse customer base out there in the community, in the marketplace, it is useful for them to see themselves reflected in the people they deal with. 
it makes it easier to interact, easier to communicate, and easier to understand each other. And that's another point to add under that comment about people being in contact with customers and know a lot about the market. This is particularly useful in fast-moving markets. And, and you need to pay attention to who's at the coalface because by the time information reaches to the top of the organization, if there are many layers, if there's not good communication, then it can be too late. So always pay attention to who's in direct contact, direct communications with the customer. And when you bring these things together with the point at the bottom that everybody can contribute, well then leadership management can be anywhere in the organization. And the leaders that allow that to happen are particularly good and valuable to the organization.